Vietnam film. You know, the thing was that we weren't really bad kids. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We weren't really bad kids because I was never really a bad kid, even though I was I grew up in a, a, a hostile area. I had to do bad things sometimes, but it doesn't mean that I was a bad kid. Because once I became the warlord of the gang, I started doing good things. Like I'm the one that, that initiated, you know, the um, patrolling of the parks at night and protecting our neighborhood and people from getting robbed and killed and raped. We caught a guy raping a girl one time. We beat the living shit out of him. We left him there for dead. I'm sure he never do that again. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the other side of the park. This is the baseball field I was talking to you guys about. It's a double diamond. And um, they kind of fixed it, but there's a lot still to be done. They don't have a scoreboard. The benches which you see, the bleachers that people go view, yeah. they knocked them down about 10 years ago to rebuild them, but the park department never finished the job. They never finished doing it. So I was trying to get funding a couple of years ago when I started doing the stuff for the teach children thing that I do. And they gave me resistance at every end. And even when I had the Carpenters Union ready to commit to replacing the bleachers, putting up a scoreboard, the park department gave me a hard time. I don't know for what reason, but they did. So I got turned off by it and I figured I'll try again a little bit later. So it's an ongoing process for me to bring more awareness to to the statistics in the South Bronx that have plagued us for many, many, many years, man, decades, where the South Bronx, the educational system has faltered. It has not really come through the way it should. And maybe because of the violence, maybe because of the ignorance, but I believe that it's as a direct result of a lack of education that the reason these things happen and peer pressure. And then the kids, instead of educating themselves, they end up being drug dealers and even good kids that happens to. And it happened to me too, because it was my mom who turned my life around because I was a drug dealer. And one day she left me a note saying, you're breaking my heart. And I didn't know she knew I was doing that. And I cried. I remember after reading her letter, and that's when I went back to college. That was back in the late 80s. And that was the best thing I ever did for my life. Because my partners, they're all dead now. All the guys that I used to sell drugs with and be partners with, they're all dead. They became millionaires, but they can't spend their money anymore. Yeah. So, so my thing was the reason that I... I was able to overcome that was by going back to school and educating myself. And I know I'm living proof because I went on to work on Wall Street for many years. I was a national IT manager. I was working with, you know, with top of the line uh, technology and stuff like that. And I was the boss. How did that happen? Because I, I educated myself. And even after I finished school, I continued educating myself. I got my Microsoft certification. I got Novell. I got A+. Plus. I got uh, Oracle, I got a bunch of edu uh, different certifications and I had a bunch of computers set up in my, in my extra room and I studied a lot. And that's how I, I, I was able to pull myself off the streets. Okay? The money was great when I was dealing drugs, but then I was making great money with my mind, using my mind, and using through the power of education. So I know it works and that's why I'm, not, I'm an advocate for that, for the children. And that's why I do each year the thing called the Teach the Children Festival as to promote the importance of education and literacy to the youth of the South Bronx. Really, right now, I got adopted by the We The World Foundation, and they want to incorporate that same mindset throughout the world. So my recent show is like a pilot now. It's not, a, a, what do they call that? Uh, it's like the pilot, you can say that, it's a pilot. And from there, we're going to build, so next year, we're going to try to make it bigger. Okay, let's take a look at the field. Oh, I didn't get that one on film. Everything you said now. I'm joking. <laughs> you're, you're a jerk, this guy. Yeah. Bang zoom. <laughs> okay, so you see here, all the bleachers are, are missing all the planks. Yeah. So when the families play, and they do have, you know, interleague play here <coughs> every summer. And you see, it's not like they left all, the, the, the bases on there. But um, the light poles that used to be up here, in the box, they fell down in the storm, and they never replaced them. So now they can't really play at night. So I try to do something about that as well, but I, for some reason people just not, just not money. And when I did have somebody I know to do it, the parks department was just not really that interested in my opinion. I think they just have the wrong people in charge, you know, because this is yeah. park. As always. <laughs> That's yeah. the typical. There's a lot of red tape when you're dealing with them and a lot of bureaucracy and stuff like that. But this park should have been for We should have beaches. We should have a scoreboard. You know, all the, Wait, all the, the playgrounds There's do, no benches this, here. That's what I'm saying. There's no benches because they took them out when they renovated the park around 10, 12 years ago, and then they never replaced them. 
And then the ones on the other side were there, but we, they took those out a couple of years ago, and they haven't replaced those either. Mm. And those they, they weren't they weren't completely bad. I don't know why they took them out. And even the ones that were here, why take out something if you're not going to replace it? Because yeah. when the families come, they have they, they end up sitting, you know, on these things, you know. And when there's kids, you can you can get hurt here. You can get badly hurt here instead of having the planks. So this is one of my biggest beef with them, but. It goes in one ear and it comes out the other with them. Yeah. They say they don't have the money, but they have the, uh, the money for other stupid things, other stupid programs. The South Bronx, which is, this is the heart of the South Bronx right here, you know, they don't really do the funding for us because they figure, ah, you know, there's a bunch of animals living there anyway. But it's not really that, that, sh that so anymore because there's a lot of really good families here now. And because of all the, all the new structures that have gone up and stuff like that, you know, I mean, you still have your bad element, don't get me wrong, and you still have, you know, people that sell drugs and all that stuff, but it's not as blatant as it used to be. It's not all out in the open the way it used to be. There was a time when when a dealer would come right here or, or sit down somewhere and there'd be a long line of people buying drugs from him right here in the park. It was many years ago, and there's spots all over the place. There's a spot called my, my place right across the street over there where they sold drugs as well. People would line up around the corner to buy. They had really big, fat nickel bags. 